Hi, in our last video, we discussed about the complex data type. In this video, we are going to discuss about Python enhancement proposal, shortly called as a PEP, and the 8 represent the version of this proposal. I have affixed a link on the slide where you can gain more insight about the detailed definitions of each and every uh, proposals that's been defined in this PEP. I've also added this link on the video description. You can make use of that in order to read the documentation in detail. Now, I've summarized the multiple components that need to be discussed under the, under the uh, Python enhancement proposal. Now, there's a saying said by Guido Van Rossum saying that code is read much more often than it is written. That's true because we write code once and then we read it thrice. So the readability is very essential here. We need to make our code highly readable. Now, what are the components that need to be discussed under, under the Python enhancement proposal? The very first one is naming convention. The second is indentations in Python. Uh, the third is code layout. The fourth one is comments. I'll be coming up with multiple videos on these sections. This video is closely discussed about uh, naming conventions. Now, types and naming conventions. There are multiple types out there in Python code. And how do we name them uh, using this standard called naming conventions? The first one is function. The second is variable. You have class, you have method, you have constant, you have module, you have package. So there are multiple types are there in Python code where each and every type need to be assigned with a name so that you can invoke that type whenever needed with that name. So in, when we come to the readability, we need to ensure the names are provided in a proper standard and that's called as your naming convention standard. Now, the first uh, thing is all about the camel case standard. In the camel case, you might have multiple word to be represented in a name. In that first word, all letters will be in lowercase. The subsequent words in that name will have its first character in caps. Then we have a Pascal case. In Pascal case, which is more similar to camel case, means it's more identical to camel case, you might have multiple words in representing the type name. All the words first character will be in caps. Then the last one is a snake case. Snake case is entirely different from the camel case and pascal case. Where here too you will have multiple words to be represented for a type name. For example, a function name or a variable name can carry multiple words in it. But each and every word have to be separated with an underscore. But they will not follow the standards of pascal case or a camel case in order to highlight its first character in caps. Please be noted that every word will be separated by underscore but none of the word first characters will be represented in caps and that's what is all about the snake cases now we will see more in detail demonstration on how to apply these standards in the different types like functions variables classes etc the first one we need to discuss about is variables usually variables will follow the snake case but sometimes they do follow with the uh, camel case. Developers used to follow even a camel case. Still there is a debate going on but the standard says you can either use a snake case standard or you can use a camel case standard. But it's good to uh, maintain a single flow of standard. So here I'm going to discuss about the snake case because I'm frequently going to use only the snake case standards throughout my course for variable namings and as well as for function namings. So how a variable name snake case would look like? If it's a single word, it's fine. You can declare it like age equals 10, uh, completely in lower case. Or you can have two words in it, employee separated with underscore and another word called age. And then you can initialize a value to that variable. So this becomes your variable snake case. What about 
function. Function will also follow the same standard of a snake case uh, naming standard. So I can define a function called uh, let's say add. So this is a single word. So you can define a function like this and you can use the keyword called pass in order to mention that this function has no statements in it. It's an empty function. Okay, the pass keyword is just to leave the function empty. Now it's it's again going to follow the snake case standard. Now coming to this multiple words in the function name, we can use define and say I have a, a function name called uh, um, calculate mean and median. So now this becomes a cam, I'm sorry, a snake case standard. But uh, if I remove this underscore specifically or intentionally, you can see it's not readable. The name of this function is not highly readable. So it's good that if we have an underscore here. So by this way, universally, the Python developers can understand that this name is nothing but a function name. Somewhere the developer comes to uh, read the name alone, not the complete function. He is just going to uh, read the name. By looking at the template of that naming standard, he can quickly understand that this is going to be a function name or this is going to be a variable name. So he, he can have that standard of understanding uh, that uh, it, it's an universal representation of standards being followed by the Python code developer. Now, variables and functions will fall under your snake case. The next one is class. Class will follow your uh, Pascal case standard. So how a Pascal case standard would look like. So I have a class called um, uh, full-time employee. Okay. And uh, here again, I'm going to use the keyword called pass representing that this class is an empty class. Now, if you look at it, again, the name is not highly readable. The reason is we are not following certain naming standards here. So how do we define a class name? You can mark the first word, first character in caps. The second word, first character in caps. And again, the third word, first character in caps. Now, this standard of representing a name will be identified as a class name quickly by the, un by the developer universally, right? So this is called as your Pascal case standard where you will not separate your words with underscore here ever, okay? You are going to just use the name without underscore, but every word first character should be of uppercase standard. Now coming to the method, method will also be of snake case. So again, I have a class called uh, part-time employee, part-time employee. And here I'm not going to leave this class as an empty class. Instead, I'm going to define a method. Method and function resemble same. If it's a standalone function means a function is not embraced with the class, but methods will be there inside the class. That's why we define the term as a method. So any function that sits inside a class will be considered as a method. This method naming standard will also follow the same snake case standard. So here I'm going to use uh, a function called uh, partial salary. So I have a function like this, which is defined inside the class and I'm going to leave this function deliberately uh, empty and this carries an parameter of self. We'll discuss about these template a bit later. But right now I'm talking about the name of that method. Now again, this name seems to be uh, unreadable. So we have to separate the two words with an underscore so that we follow the standard of snake case here too. So your method also follows the snake case standard. Okay, similar like your function and a variable, a method which is embraced inside a class will also follow its naming standard for its name as snake case standard. Okay, so snake case is pretty much widely used in many places in Python. The next one is constant. So coming to the constant, all words will be of uppercase, followed with the snake case 
template or a format. For example, I want to declare uh, a pi value. Okay, so I can say pi, pi, completely in caps. So 3.14 is the value representation for pi. So p and i word, I'm sorry, the character is completely capitalized. Now if it's coming up with multiple word statements in constant, we can do have uh, the uppercase standard followed with the snake case format. So constant pi equals 3.14. Now if you look at this, again the uh, constant name doesn't seem to be highly readable. So what we have to do now here? Quickly we have to add an underscore so that it's highly readable and it becomes highly readable and also we follow the snake case here but all the word, all letters in the word will be of capitalized. So that's how we represent a constant. So constant means a value cannot be changed further. So pi value is 3.14 which is all, all, always constant. So you cannot change the value, right? Now so this is one standard way of representing a constant in Python by following the naming standard of uppercase with snake case format. The next is module. So module is nothing but a Python file name. You will have one file created for a Python and you will give a name for it and that name also to be followed with a standard. And what is the standard that we are going to follow? A short name. You can have multiple words but let it be short not lengthy name okay so for example i'm going to have a name called uh, module dot py so that seems to be uh, uh, pretty small right or if in case you want to have a module file module and here you are supposed to use uh, underscore and then use file dot py so your Python file naming uh, standard uh, will be like this. You will have your names completely in lowercase and ensure you have a short uh, word and each and every word have to be separated with underscore. Then you have a package naming standard. In package, uh, you will be using multiple words. When I'm using multiple words, let's say package, package is a single word that's fine so package is nothing but a, a folder where you will place all your modules means all your python files right in java also we have a package we import the package here also we uh, import the package so packages are nothing but a group of uh, modules package contains a group of module so we need to give a name for the package means we are giving a name for the folder so what the folder name will be a package itself it's a short word and it should be in lowercase. If you have multiple words for the package means whenever I say package, I represent the folder. Now when I have a multiple words for the folder, let's say I have new package. You will not separate them with underscore. These are folder names. These are package names. So you will not separate them with underscore. No capitalization of the first character. So you will not follow any of the standard. Straight away you just mention it as a new package. Do not separate words by underscore when it comes to the package naming. The naming standard for the packages, make it short and it should be 100% lowercase in words but you will not separate multiple words with underscore. But modules, short, 100% lowercase words and each and every word in the module have to be separated with underscore. So with this, I end the note of uh, the naming conventions in Python enhancement proposal. In the next video, I'm going to discuss about the indentation.